So this is my seven month meditation update. I'm a gonna tell you, I'm a gonna tell you, I'm a gonna tell you now. I've been doing Vipassana meditation. As taught by S. N. Goenka. For an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening. Every day, or most days, or now seven months. What's a hoo-ha? Anyway, this is my meditation update to you. <coughs> the thing I want to focus on today is non-violence. Almost got a Duncan. <laughs> okay. I've been developing an understanding of what non-violence is experientially. I think this is what people refer to when they talk about non-violence, or at least this is what I want to refer to when I talk about non-violence. A lot of spiritual or religious traditions have sets of rules or guidances for things you should do. For example, the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, or the Niyamas and the Yamas of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Five things you should do and five things you shouldn't. And then there's also the Buddha's Eightfold Path and the whole thing about right livelihood, right speech, right action, right, and so on and so on. One of the things that I've been noticing and has become clearer and clearer to me as I've practiced Vipassana is that I am more and more aware that certain types of thoughts, words, and actions lead to immediate suffering for me personally and intensely in that moment. And so I have a natural tendency to not want to do those things, to not want to say those things, to not want to latch onto and give energy to certain types of thoughts. And it seems as though those things are what you might consider violent. They tend to be actions which involve trying to push the stream, which seem to be related to being not in harmony with the Tao, not in harmony with reality, with fighting what is. And so people sometimes think that non-violence is some sort of principle which we need to learn and practice because it's good, it's moral, it's right. And what I'm discovering is that non-violence, which is actually very broad and isn't just about hurting somebody physically, it's about pushing and trying to manipulate reality, that kind of violence is actually harmful harmful now to me. Me personally, it's harmful to my peace, it's harmful to my enjoyment of this present moment. These old traditions have this thing where they tell you how you should live. It seems like people interpret that as being told that this is how you should live. But those same principles like don't kill, don't steal, don't lie, don't cover, don't do all this other stuff comes naturally and flows naturally from practice, from practicing insight or awareness or equanimity or these things, they grow naturally and it's a cycle. When you practice those things, it helps you. When you, when you follow that guidance as best you can, which is very difficult, and your mind is very impure, it gives you some foundation which enables you to then practice more with your internal self-awareness practice, which then leads naturally to those qualities, those behaviors becoming stronger in you, which then feeds your practice again. So it's a virtuous cycle. That's my understanding of nonviolence. And all you need to do to get better at nonviolence is to meditate. So go to dhamma.org, that's D-H-A-M-M-A.org. And there you can find a meditation center near you pretty much much anywhere in the world where you can go and learn to practice Vipassana in a 10 day retreat for no cost with great food, great accommodation and great teaching all for free. Go there now, get started. It's fucking amazing. Thank you.